You are beautiful. Now, some of you will scoff at this. Some of you will roll your eyes. Some of you will feel sad and think as if. But it is true. Now, I know that some of you will also be thinking, thanks for the compliment. But I'm telling you, friends, it is not a compliment. No, it is just logical truth. Logical fact. This is something that I talk a lot about on Twitch when people come in and we happen to have conversations about self-confidence and beauty and what have you. And I thought now is probably a good time to open that up and talk about it here. That way it's permanently around in case people need a little reminder to uh, assure themselves that regardless of what you do and regardless of what you think, you are beautiful. Now, one of the first key points in understanding the fact that we, as human beings, each individual one of us is beautiful, is understanding that society has standards that are designed to make us self-conscious, designed to be over-analytical about our appearances. It could be the capitalism element of it, where they want you to feel ugly so that you buy things that make you feel more beautiful. It could be jealous society. That whole idea of I'm going to put you down so that I feel good. That classic sort of bullying mentality. It may be a great many things that society constructs, but whatever the scenario, the results are still the same. The fact that we question a lot of things about ourselves and we feel self-conscious within ourselves. Even professional models, these beauteous beings that we are told are the absolute pinnacle of aesthetic perfection, all have their own personal bodily hang-ups. Now, one of the key elements of understanding why it is that we certainly view ourselves as the least beautiful when we view other people as so pretty and beautiful and handsome in their own rights, is understanding certain aspects of how we look at other people versus how we look at ourselves. One of those big things is when you look at somebody else, you look at them as one whole, as in like a whole picture. You look at someone else and you see their entire body. You see everything they're wearing, the way their hair is, the way their makeup is, the way that their beard is, if they happen to have a beard or makeup or clothing. You, you see them as one grand picture. However, when you look at yourself, the first thing that you see are the details about yourself that you don't like. You never look at yourself as one whole picture. You see yourself in the mirror and you immediately notice all those little imperfections that you desperately hope that nobody else notices, but you cannot see anything other than how glaringly obvious they are. On top of that, the vast majority of us can't take compliments. Instead, we divert them. We refuse to accept them. We very rarely say, oh, thank you very much, and instead say, oh, well, that's you saying that, ha <laughs> ha or in some other way, divert the appreciation of that individual saying that they like something about us. Now, don't tell anyone, but even I have my own self-doubts. Even I, with all of my excessive amounts of unbound, nauseatingly optimistic confidence, have my self-doubts, my teeth. Genetically, in some parts of my mouth, I had three sets of teeth. My baby teeth, my adult teeth, and an other set of adult teeth. And in other parts of my mouth, I had one set of teeth. Growing up and becoming an alternative model, my teeth were constantly in my mind as something that wasn't perfect. My hair. I mean, you can all see the size of my forehead. My unbelievably joyous solar panel of love. But at the end of the day, I was balding. And when I say was, I mean genetically, my mother's father was a very bald man and my forehead was becoming a five head and then a six head and then a seven head. And then I realized that I really needed to do something about it. So I shaved my head for charity. Oh God, this was a few years ago now. I shaved my head for charity and I looked kind of like Richard O'Brien from The Crystal Maze. In fact, look, there I am. Freshly cut hair. Looking like Richard O'Brien from The Crystal Maze. This is Richard O'Brien from The Crystal Maze. So that 
everyone's on the same page. And I spent a while with my hair completely and utterly bald. I was the proverbial cue ball. And to be honest with you, in hindsight, I feel like I did suit it. However, I hated it. I hated being bald. I could not stand it. And therefore, I got cosmetic surgery. I got hair implants. This is the gooey bit, the gory bit. So if you want to skip ahead, I fully understand. They literally drilled the hair out of the back of my head and sliced up the top of my head to implant it up there. And for those people that are wondering, the reason why I still have a massive forehead is they couldn't do it any further down than the top wrinkle. Because that is where your forehead starts. So genetically, I still have a massive forehead. Otherwise, every time I raised my eyebrows, I'd get a weird wrinkle of hair. And even outside of these things that developed later in life, I have always been a skinny, runty person. I've always been particularly thin. Regardless of how much I ate, regardless of what I ate, regardless of what physical exercise that I did, I've always been particularly thin. And for those people that are wondering, yes, you can be discriminated against because you're thin. There's only so many times of, hey, you need to eat more. Hey, you should have a pie. Hey, get some cake in you that you can really take before it becomes unbelievably tiresome. And I'm sure that people at the other end of the weight spectrum will fully understand that from the reverse point of view of people directing them as to how to exercise, what diet they should be on and all that stuff, you know? Not that I will say that I have let any of these things ever hold me back. Regardless of my own self-doubts and my own issues with my own appearance, and yes, I'm still a very confident person, regardless of all of these things, I still modelled. I still pushed myself to do things that made me feel happy and embraced the beauty that I have as a person because we all have beauty as people. How'd you work that one out, Valen? Well, let me tell you, Valen. Now that we understand why we may feel less exquisitely perfect in our appearance, how is it that I have categorically determined that you are beautiful. And that actually comes down to math. Good old mathematics. You see, according to worldometers.info at the time of this recording, the current world population is just over 1.8 billion people. Valen from the editing suite here. It's 8.1 billion, not 1.8 billion. I got the numbers the wrong way around. That is an incomprehensible number. To put it into perspective for everybody, if you counted a single person every second, literally counting one person every second, it would take you approximately 257 years to count all of the people that are currently on the planet. That should also give you an idea of how ludicrously wealthy the super rich are. Just saying. However, despite being such a ludicrously large number, each one of those 1.8 billion people is an individual with individual tastes, individual opinions, and individual desires when it comes to aesthetics. Back when I worked for a big old corporation, the money was good, but the creative expression was lacking. I had a conversation with an Indian colleague of mine about aesthetics, about appearance, not in an objectifying way, but in a culturally comparative way. You are allowed to have aesthetic preferences without being toxic about it. It only becomes toxic when you enforce those preferences on other people, regardless of whether they are close personal friends and or in relationship with you or strangers on the street. Anyway, we found that the things that I found most attractive in another person were completely baffling to my Indian colleague and vice versa. The things that he found particularly appealing were completely baffling to me. The aesthetic elements that they found most appealing were about as far away from my personal preferences as could possibly be. Not only that, but things that appeal to us aesthetically change 
as we age, as we learn, as we get new experiences, as we meet new people. And as a result, there is no other way to say it, but regardless of whether you like it or not, you are beautiful because there will be people out there, not just one, but several people out there who think that you are the absolute pinnacle of aesthetic beauty. And it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you view of your own self. The fact of the matter is, in accordance with logic and mathematics, you are beautiful. You don't get a choice. Just deal with it. However, there is a difference between knowing that you are beautiful and feeling it in yourself. And that's where self-confidence comes into this entire dynamic. Now, in regards to attitude, I can honestly say that self-confidence is definitely the most attractive feature to me personally. If somebody is self-confident in and of themselves, I will find that attractive and their uh, personal aesthetics will be an accentuation to that. So let's break it down a little bit, shall we? Why am I so confident? Vain by name, vain by nature, you would expect a certain level of self-confidence with me, but I am. I am very, very self-confident, despite the fact that I have my own personal bodily issues. I know full well there's things that are wrong with me, and regardless of those facts, I know full well that I'm still very aesthetically pleasing. And I am confident about that. That isn't to say that I am arrogant about that. There is a difference between confidence and arrogance. Confidence is knowing you are good at something, knowing that you are beautiful, knowing that you are pretty, knowing that in a certain situation you will be good in that situation. Arrogance is rubbing it in people's faces. Yes, I understand how ironic it is me doing a video on how self-confident I am and then telling you that it's not arrogance despite the fact that I am rubbing it in your face, but we're running with it, okay? Now, for starters, looking back on what I had just said, I do my absolute best to look at myself as a whole picture. So when I get dressed in the morning, get myself up and sorted, look in the mirror, go, God, do I look rough, but God damn, do I make rough look good, and see myself as a whole picture. My mind immediately goes to the bits of myself that I don't like, and I stop, and I take a step back, and I look at the entire ensemble, the entire outfit, the entire vision that I am putting forth into the world with the aesthetics that I have chosen for that day. Now, in order to help me with that, I dress for a full outfit. Regardless of what I'm doing in the day, regardless of who's going to see me, I dress for myself and I dress in full outfits. Like today, for example, I'm not seeing a single other soul for the entirety of the day, and yet I'm still wearing very alluring skin-tight jeans that go well with the rest of my ensemble. And as a personal choice, I always start from the underwear. I wear certain underwear and then build the outfit out from the underwear that I am wearing. That way I feel good. And if I feel good in that underwear, there is a good chance that I'm going to feel good in the outerwear as well. It's a personal choice, but trust me, if you're wearing nice underwear, you will feel more confident in yourself. It's like wearing nice underwear to a date or knowing that you're going to be looking good in a suit to a job interview, for example, you know? Do the little things that help you feel your most confident, help you feel your best in yourself. Now, let's take a moment to talk a little bit about my history, because I feel like it's important to get a bit of perspective here. I was not born with this level of confidence. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe that's bullshit. That isn't to say that I haven't always been loud and flamboyant. In my younger years, I was definitely a, an attention seeker, a show off, constantly trying to find out where I fit in amongst my little social groups. I was very self-conscious about it because I never seemed to fully fit in. There was always something missing. I was never quite cool enough. Cool whatever that is. And like I said, I always felt this little something that was missing. And my error as a child and teenager was the fact that I would look out to the social groups around me to find the thing that I was missing. 
when realistically speaking, what I should have been doing is looking in and finding out what it was that I didn't have. And what I didn't have was self-confidence. It was a really awkward time because the social aspect of me really wanted to fit in, but the flamboyant aspect of me really wanted to stand out. And those clashed horribly. Lots of clashing. To the point where, like, as a school child, I wanted to be like everybody else, and everybody else was wearing tracksuit bottoms and, and very sporty clothing. So I got the tracksuit bottoms that everybody got. They were called poppers. They were very big in the 90s. They looked kind of like this. However, I couldn't just get poppers. The social bit that wanted to fit in was like, cool, everyone's wearing poppers. You need to wear poppers too. The flamboyant bit of me was like, cool, let's make them neon orange umbro poppers. So I'm technically fitting in, and yet I'm standing out. Now, people say that you cannot change overnight. You can't do it. It's not possible. And I understand where that comes from, because at the end of the day, you have had an entire history. Regardless of your age, you have had an entire history of being a certain way, and you have to unlearn so many behaviors and what have you but the fact of the matter is that i did i remember the night very very clearly i was stood in my parents bathroom i was 13 14 and my parents at the time had a giant mirror that covered one wall in the bathroom and i remember staring into the darks of my eyes and saying valen you're hollow. There is nothing here to love. And no one will love you. But you have nothing inside. And I remember thinking about the two people that I knew that were the coolest people in the world. One friend in school who was so unbelievably good at sports. So popular among all of his peers. So envied by the other guys in school, and so loved by the ladies in school. Heteronormative nature was all the rage when I was a kid. And my other friend, who was so unbelievably laid back, he took everything in his stride. He was just so unbelievably chill and relaxed, and things would come at him and he would just let them happen. And I remember thinking, these two are the coolest people that I could possibly imagine. And the coolest person in the entire world would be a mesh of these two people. Like a mix of all of the great points from this person and all the great points from this person melded together in one person. And I looked back at myself and I decided that at that moment I was going to be that person. I was not going to make any more excuses as to why I couldn't be the coolest person, in my mind at least. And I was going to be that cool individual. I wasn't sporty, but I was energetic. I wasn't laid back, but I was calm. And I can tell you that it was quite the shift in mentality. And it wasn't easy to step into that role. I went into school the following day and was bullied the hell out of, as I frequently was. But the difference wasn't in the bullying. The difference was in how I handled the bullying. The bullies would come in and be like, ah, oh, Valen's gay, Valen's gay, ah. And I would go, and? And suddenly, there was a change. Because the bullies had no power to bully me. And it started with lies. It started with me completely and utterly bullshitting my way through confidence. That whole fake it till you make it thing. But as time went on, I realized that what I was faking wasn't fake. I pretended to be this confident person and then realized I was this confident person. 
I pretended to be the mesh of those two people and then realized that I wasn't quite the perfect mesh, but I was good enough that I felt good about myself. Realistically speaking, all of that actually started much earlier as well. Because there was that moment, and I would say that that was the defining moment where I decided to be a more confident person, but it actually started much earlier than that. Because I remember a conversation that happened with my dad where I was so vexed about a party I was going to and how I had the wrong clothing. I didn't have the clothing that would make me cool. I wasn't wearing the right jeans. I wasn't wearing the right shirt. I, I can't remember exactly what it was. I remember it being super important to me. And I remember turning to my dad being, oh, God, dad, this is the worst. This is the worst. I don't have the right things. Oh, this is the, oh, what am I going to do? And my dad said, so what does it matter if you don't have the right things? And I remember being, oh, dad, you don't understand. If I don't have the right jeans, then I'm not going to be cool in the eyes of my friends. And my dad said, but what does it matter? I said, if I'm not cool in the eyes of my friends, then they're not going to want to be around me anymore. They're not going to want to be my friends anymore, my dad said. But what does it matter? And no matter how many times I had an answer as to why it mattered, my dad responded with, but what does it matter? And that has stuck with me because it's so important. But what does it matter if I'm not wearing the right cool outfit? So long as I feel good in the outfit that I'm wearing. But what does it matter if these people don't think I'm cool? So long as I'm enjoying myself. But what does it matter if friends walk away from me for being myself? Because if they do that, they weren't my friends to begin with. And then there was like a realization of the fact that I can't be somebody else. I can't be the mesh of these two cool people. I can't be any of those things. I can only be myself. So I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to push myself to the nth degree to be the best version of myself that I can possibly be. And naturally, I'd encourage you all to be the same. And then, of course, there was the whole thing with the bizarre ball and the first chance that I got to truly be flamboyant as a person. But that whole story is available in another video. In summary, I am now in my mid-30s. I know my youthful visage has lulled you into a false sense of security, but it's true. I'm in my mid-30s and I am constantly doing new things, new and exciting things that make me nervous and unsettled. And yet I keep doing them. And that should be proof to you that you are never too old to learn something new. And in this current circumstance, I'm going to give it to you now, that you are never too old to learn to love yourself. It's not going to be easy. There'll be a lot of unlearning you got to do. But you are never too old to start. And it starts, like it did with me, with a simple decision. Do you want to change? And if the answer is yes, and what are you going to do to change? With the understanding that steps back are okay. It's okay to have setbacks. It's okay to have bad periods where you, things get undone. So long as you always keep trying to step forward. Now, I know that people as a whole don't like change. We don't. We don't like change especially when it's out of our control. But change happens. Every single one of us changes every single day. You don't have a choice over this. This is just the way that it is, I'm afraid to say. Because every single day you learn new things, regardless of how small or massive those little lessons may be, you still change every day. Every day you learn new things, and for the following days, you adapt your behaviors based on what you have learned the previous day, and or days, and or weeks, and or months, and or years, etc., etc. So if you're going to change every single day, why not change for the better? Why not make the decision that you're going to change to be a more confident person? To accept the fact that you are beautiful whether you like it or not and run with it. And I can tell you, if I can go from what I was when I was a, a young, self-conscious, super paranoid, super overthinking, anxious teenager to what I am now, a self-confident, self-accepting, beautiful individual. 
than anyone can. And now that I've stepped down off my little soapbox, and it is a soapbox, because I feel super passionate about it. I feel super passionate about the whole idea of the fact that every single person is beautiful. You are beautiful, whether you like it or not. You don't get a choice over this fact, so you may as well accept it and start feeling confident about it. Feeling confident in yourself is so liberating and freeing, and it starts with the acceptance of yourself. And in this case, acceptance of the fact that you are beautiful. No matter what you look like, it doesn't matter. You are beautiful. And now that I'm down off my soapbox, I thank you very much for listening to my little pseudo TED talk, because it is something that I feel super passionate about, and I feel that everyone should embrace, to say the least. But yeah. Go forth and embrace your confidence. Do you know what? You can start today by indulging in a little engagement. And you can type into the comments, I am beautiful. Even if you don't believe it. Or even better, type, God, do I look rough. But God damn, do I make rough look good. As a little stepping stone on your journey of self-confidence. Also, it helps with the engagement of the video. I'm not going to turn around and say it's not self-serving because it definitely is. I'm very honest like that, you know? While you're at it, if you would be so kind as to click that cheeky little like button if you've liked what I've said and consider pressing that cheeky little subscribe button. Or even better, check out a couple of my other videos, see if it's the content for you and then consider pressing that cheeky little subscribe button. If you would like to check me out on other cheeky little social media platforms, you can check me out on Twitch twitch.tv forward slash valenvain where I do various different talkings of shite. Come and have a conversation with us. We always have a good time. You can check me out on TikTok where I talk about the whimsical facts of sex and other such weird little tidbits that pop into my head. Or you can check me out on Instagram which is far more vainglorious. You'll see lots of pictures of me doing shows and other bits and pieces. Until then, you glorious, spectacular, beautiful individuals. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Because if I wouldn't do it, it'll fucking kill you. All right?